Let's continue with the management of your cafe. To continue operating, you should be concerned about the costs and revenue of your cafe. We shall start with an analysis of the costs of running the cafe. Costs can be fixed or variable. Fixed costs cannot be changed in the short run. Let's say you signed an agreement to rent a space for $50 per day for one year. This is regarded as a fixed cost, which is the same regardless of the output. If we divide this fixed cost by the number of coffees served each day, we get the average fixed cost. Obviously, as the number of coffees served increases, the average fixed cost decreases. If we plot the average fixed cost against the quantity produced, we get this downward sloping line. Variable costs vary according to the level of production. For simplicity of illustration, we consider labour costs as the only variable cost for your cafe. That is, you're able to hire and fire without delay. Let's say you pay each worker $50 a day. These are the total variable costs. And if we divide them by the number of coffees served, we get the average variable cost for each cup of coffee served. Plot it down and we get a curve that looks like this. Because of diminishing marginal productivity of labour, the average variable cost starts increasing after a certain point. And if we add up the fixed and variable costs, we get the total cost. Divide by the number of coffees served and we get the average total cost for each cup of coffee. If we plot the ATC, it should look like the AVC shifted up by the AFC. And the marginal cost is the change in total cost per unit change in output quantity. Again, it is upward sloping after a certain point due to diminishing marginal productivity. One interesting thing to note is that the marginal cost curve intersects the AVC and ATC curves at their minimum. Now, these two minimums are important as they determine the shutdown and break even price levels for the firm. We'll come back here later, but for now, let's shift our attention from costs to revenue. Revenue is simply price times the quantity sold. In order to understand price, we need to understand the kind of competitive market the firm operates in. This shall be explained in a later lesson, but for now, you need to understand that for a firm operating in a perfectly competitive market, it is a price taker, and therefore it has a perfectly elastic demand curve. The marginal revenue is equal to the average revenue, which is equal to the market price. So, for example, if all your competitors sell coffee at $2.50 per cup, you have to sell your coffee at $2.50 too, under perfect competition. For every additional cup you sell, you earn $2.50 more, so your marginal revenue is $2.50, and average revenue per cup is also $2.50. Now let's fit this marginal revenue curve to the cost curves. If the cafe sells coffee at the market price of $2.50, the profit maximising point will be this point, where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. Why is this so? To maximise profit, you want to charge as high a price as the competition will allow, at as high a quantity as possible. So ideally, you would want to operate at a price quantity level as far to this top right corner as possible. However, you also want to do it as long as the revenue received from serving an additional coffee is higher than the cost you require to produce it. This means that you want to increase production for as long as the MR is greater than MC. So here, we see that profit is maximised when you produce at Q star cups of coffee per day. The average profit you make per cup is the difference between the marginal cost and average total cost. Now let's look at another scenario where the market price of coffee is $1.80. The profit maximising point has moved here but notice that at this price, the average revenue is lower than the average total cost of each cup of coffee. This means that the cafe will run at a loss. Does this mean that you should shut down your cafe? Not so soon. As you've signed a lease of one year for the short run, 
you may still have to pay this amount whether your cafe continues to operate or not. Notice that at this price point, it's still above the average variable cost per cup. This means that for every cup you serve, you're able to at least cover the variable costs and a part of the fixed costs. So in the short run, you should continue running the cafe such that the losses due to the fixed costs are minimized. After the lease expires, then you can make a decision on whether to shut the cafe. However, if the market price drops to $1.50 per cup, this does not even cover the average variable cost per cup. You should shut down the cafe immediately because selling every additional cup of coffee incurs you additional losses on top of the lease that you have to pay. So in essence, under perfect competition, this minimum point where the ATC is equal to the MC is the break-even level. If market price is above this level, your firm makes a profit. If market price is below this level, your firm makes a loss. However, if it is above this level where the AVC equals the MC, your firm should continue to operate in the short run as the losses from fixed costs can be minimized. You should shut down the firm in the long run if conditions don't improve. If the market price is below this level, you should shut down your firm in both the short run and the long run. Another way to study the problem is to look at the total revenue versus the total cost. If the demand curve is horizontal, the total revenue curve will be an upward sloping straight line. A typical total cost curve will look something like this. If the cafe produces at this profit maximizing output, you can see that the profit is maximized here. If the demand is lower, such that the total revenue curve is below the total costs curve, no economic profit can be made. However, if the total revenue is still higher than the total variable cost, the firm should still continue to operate in the short run, but shut down in the long run. And if the demand is even lower, the revenue cannot even cover the variable costs, so the firm should shut down both in the short run and in the long run. Now let's look at the situation under imperfect competition. We shall just use the example of a monopolist firm to illustrate. Again, we'll explain why this is so, but for now, take it that the demand curve for a monopolist is downward sloping. This demand curve is the average revenue curve as well. The marginal revenue curve will be a steeper downward sloping curve that can go below zero at certain levels of output. Likewise, the profit maximizing output is where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. And to check if the firm is actually making profit at this level of output, we check if the average revenue is higher than the average total cost. If the demand is reduced such that the demand curve barely touches the ATC curve, we know that this is the break-even point for the firm. Likewise, if this point goes below the ATC curve, the firm should still continue to operate in the short run if it's still above the AVC curve. However, if the demand is so low that this point goes below the AVC curve, the firm should shut down both in the short run and in the long run. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.